Hello, my name is Kai, and on this channel, this is my first video, and we're gonna try and do some Rhino tutorials, Photoshop tutorials, Lightroom, Photoshop, Illustrator, etc. Maybe SketchUp. Just sort of talking about rendering, at least for now, that's the goal. So today we're gonna talk about grass, hills, hilly grass, and just, I know that this method works, um, that I've come up with works for Rhino 7 for Mac. This is just something that I've come up with and have used in a couple renderings to make grass. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first we're gonna start off with a plane, um, that big, sure. And we're gonna go over to properties displacement maps here. We want to go to the leather grain bump texture and turn this up at least to, to high, if not very high. We'll start with very high for now. And we'll go ahead and turn it on. And once it loads, you can see we get this sort of bumpy, uh, bumpy grass. We get this grass material. Um, let's make this a little smaller just to make it easier to work with. So here yeah, we got this grass, and just for visual purposes, we can go ahead and pull in a material for that. And here, grass. Let's just go with dry some dry grass. And so that loads in. And if we switch this to, I like to use this view that I've made. Um, it lets you see materials without having to switch into a sort of render mode, sort of like how SketchUp does. So if you switch into render mode, you can see we have the stars from grass. However, the one problem with this grass is it's not very realistic because if you look at it from the side, it's all the same size all the same height, sort of, which isn't very grass-like. And it's pretty flat, which also isn't very true of grass. So we're gonna make another plane, about the same size maybe, and pull it over here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna see that we have these ISO curves. We want to get more of those, basically. And so we're gonna rebuild this to have about nine ISO curves and have a degree of curvature of three in both directions. So I think we'll get these nice smooth curves and we'll have lots of ISO curves to mimic. So we'll go ahead and rebuild that. I'm gonna use this command to turn the lights on, or turn the points on, and we're just gonna start grabbing some points. So let's, let's grab this group of like six, about like that. So now we're starting to get some lumpiness. Maybe not that high. We want this to be a fairly, and then we'll grab some of these and pull those up. And then now we can take these, turn the points back off, and then get some grass going. We'll start with this at just high. So now we can just sort of overlap these Pull our bumpier grass down just a bit. Um, and so, there we go. Now it's starting to look a little bit more realistic. Um, let's see if we can get the hillier part um, at a higher resolution. There we go. So yeah, we're just starting to get some nice varied grass. Very cool, there's some grass. And so for this method of taking a plane and making it bumpy, or not bumpy, hilly, that's a technique I've used for a variety of different um, purposes. So like if we come here, let's grab these points and pull them up. And you start to make 
sort of a larger landscape that I don't know, you could stick a house in, let's see. Like rendering, modeling, larger, a larger context for your project. One thing you can also see about this grass is that it's fairly straight up and down in terms of the blades. So if we sort of hide our hilly grass for now, you can use the command extract render mesh. Extract render mesh. And so what this does is it takes your surface and like all of the displacement you have on it and turns it into an actual object. Uh, because currently it's just sort of like, it's not really reading the bumps as individual surfaces. It's just taking that surface and making it bumpy. So with the mesh, you can see how it makes it an actual object in terms of the displacement. And it looks super gross in shaded mode, but once you get back to render mode, it's the exact same thing because it makes whatever it is you're rendering like the exact object of what's being rendered into a mesh. Whereas before it's just sort of a distorted surface. And so what we can do with this is we can, if we use the command cage edit, you get a bounding box for the world and however many points and boundaries you want and just hit uh, enter again for that one. Um, so what we can do if we hide we have this one is we can sort of take this top layer of points and scale it by about 1.1 maybe. Maybe that might have been a bit much, but you can see we're starting to get a more um, sort of stretched, maybe windswept uh, grass. So if we undo that. We can try some other things. Maybe we just move it to one side. So here we go. There's some, maybe your site is windy and your grass isn't quite up and down. That's another way of adding some realism to that. You can look at another strategy for making it more realistic. If we come back to our original render mesh, I know, our original displaced surface. Another thing you can do is add different patches of, of different sized grass. So if we take this circle, if we take the circle, make it a plane, and run our same displacement settings at very high, and assign the material, and go ahead and turn that on. You can see you have, another, uh, you have another patch of grass. And so what we want to do to make this stand out in the context of the rest of this grass is change the white point. And so I guess one thing I should have explained earlier is that the way that these displacement maps work is essentially you have an image that has a variation of black, white, and grays, and the black points are down, I like they're lower, and then the white points are higher, and so, and the grays in between, of course. And so if we make the height of the white point equal to two, then you will see that the parts where it's white become higher, so it essentially just makes the grass taller. So if we look at this from this front, and we switch this to two, what that does to our grass is it makes it taller. And so if we come back to our original grass patch and blend, overlay these two patches of grass together, sort of like so, what we start to end up with is just a more varied grassy surface as opposed to just a flat plane of evenly sized grass. And so maybe you start to make these other taller patches of grass more, um, more organically shaped and start to scale them and manipulate them 
um, perhaps with the wind, then um, you can start to set up a more realistic grass environment and potentially combining that with bigger hills and um, at various scales, et cetera, et cetera, to create a more realistic render environment for your project because that is what I find to be key into making a project look realistic is everything around, around it in terms of organic material being rendered. So yeah, we can take a quick look at some other examples of using this grass, these material, this uh, technique to create um, renders. So once this loads, all right. So if you look at this model, and you can see we've got some sort of wind swept, wind swept grass, and we've got these surfaces extruded, and to create uh, to create some hills for the background. And I'll show you what the final image for that looks like. So yeah, that is how I make grass and grassy surfaces. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And if you have any other ideas for tutorials, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching. Bye.